Uh, thanks very much, James, and thanks for inviting me. Um, so I'm James Stewart, University of Liverpool. I'm a molecular biologist, but uh, over my career, I've worked on a number of animal models of virus infection. And when the coronavirus outbreak started, um, along with Andrew Owen, um, my group set up uh, rodent models of SARS-CoV-2 and COVID-19, uh, partly to test um, uh, evolving therapies, but also to look at pathogenesis, um, and now to do a certain amount of risk assessment uh, as part of the G2P uh, UK programme. So really an extension of this was to, to look at um, whether domestic rats uh, could be infected by SARS-CoV-2. Um, and before I start, the people that have been involved with the model setup and with this project, Jordan, uh, Ellie and Perul, uh, in particular doing the, the, the hard animal graft, and Abdullah has taken uh, the downstream analysis on as part of his PhD project. Uh, Julian and his group very helpfully helping out the sequence, and Anya uh, from Zurich doing pathology. Um, hopefully I can get this to advance somehow. That's it. So a number of companion uh, domestic animal species have been tested and found to be susceptible um, to SARS-CoV-2. And as you heard in, in the uh, previous talk from Vim, obviously ferrets and mink are highly susceptible uh, and can transmit back to, back to humans. Uh, domestic cats, deer, and other species are found to be susceptible, um, but possibly not to the same extent um, and transmit back to humans, although that's, uh, the jury's still out on that, I guess. So there's a concern that, that a lot of these species could act as a, a reservoir, uh, and even if they don't immediately transmit back, um, you can get a uh, mutation uh, within these uh, reservoirs that might then potentially spread back uh, to humans. So more recently, several groups around the world uh, have been looking at sewage because obviously SARS-CoV-2 uh, replicates to some extent in the gut and is secreted in, uh, into sewage. Um, and mutations have been detected within sewage uh, that doesn't look uh, like anything else that, that's detected in humans. So there's been a concern as to, to where this is coming from and an emerging concern that free living rodents that live in sewers, particularly rats, um, might be responsible. And obviously rats are extremely numerate uh, within the UK, I believe the, the second most numerate species after domestic chickens. They also form large colonies um, around human habitation. So I think there's a real risk uh, of these, uh, or there could be a risk of these being a um, a pool uh, 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 for reverse zoonosis. So mice, unlike hamsters, um, mice, uh, laboratory mice and, and wild mice are relatively resistant to SARS-CoV-2 infection. And this has been shown to be due to reduced binding, principally due to reduced binding of the spike protein to the receptor, to the human ACE2 receptor or in this case, the, uh, the mouse ACE2 receptor. However, it's been shown that some of the, the mutations that have developed over the, the past year, in particular N501Y in the spike, uh, has been shown to permit more efficient infection of mice. Mice and rat ACE2 share a high degree of uh, amino acid identity, in particular in the receptor binding domain uh, of spike. Um, uh, is conserved between mice and rats, including uh, residues that are involved between contact uh, between the, the spike and ACE2. So the aim of this was to empirically determine if SARS-CoV-2 and some of the emerging variants of concern within the UK could infect uh, and transmit rats. And subsequent to this, analyze the sequence variation or any sequence variation we found after infection uh, of rats to see whether there was anything that might be of concern coming out. So we took uh, standard laboratory rats, Wistar rats, 
um, relatively young, I guess, eight to 10 weeks of age. So they were still growing when we got them and infected them with various strains of uh, SARS-CoV-2. Firstly, the Liverpool strain, um, which is a lineage B isolate from very early on in, in, the, uh, in the pandemic uh, that was isolated by uh, um, workers in Liverpool. Um, the Alpha B1.1.7, B uh, again, that was isolated uh, in the UK later on in uh, 2020, early 21. Uh, and the beta variant uh, that was isolated uh, in South Africa. So rats were infected intranasally uh, with these um, uh, isolates. They were then followed, and what, what we do is monitor clinical signs, principally weight, but also respiratory signs uh, over a period of time. Take uh, samples, throat swabs, which we find are a good surrogate for um, what's going on in terms of replication in the upper respiratory tract were taken at three time points. Um, and then at day seven, we took various tissues uh, to look at what was going on. So as I said, the principal clinical sign that we, we monitor um, is, is weight loss. Rodents don't tend to get very good uh, temperature rise. Um, in fact, they get temperature loss with severe infection. What we found was none of the, uh, in none of the uh, infected animals did we see any significant uh, overall uh, weight loss between the groups. However, there were a few animals where there was a suggestion that there was um, weight loss within individual animals. Okay. We didn't see any other clinical signs at any point, so no respiratory was distress, etc., which is different from what you'd see in uh, particularly hamsters, where um, by day, three day four, you'd see rapid weight loss and you'd see uh, respiratory signs. We then looked at signs of infection uh, in the swabs and we used two PCR assays for this. The conventional N uh, genome PCR, which will detect uh, viral load, overall viral load, but also looking for subgenomic RNAs, which is a good measure of whether you're actually getting active virus replication within those uh, samples as opposed to just accumulation of uh, RNA. And what we found was that, that at day one with the, the Liverpool, the original strain, um, was that uh, there wasn't actually much evidence of viral load, uh, particularly early on, or viral replication. But there was with the variants of concern, and both of these obviously contain the 501Y, which enables better um, uh, better binding to the, um, the, the rodent uh, ACE2. So there was a suggestion here that, that there was uh, viral replication going on. And with the two variants of concern, alpha and beta, uh, we found actually that this replication continued um, throughout uh, the, the time course of the experiment. Interestingly, two of the, the rats uh, that were analyzed with the Liverpool strain, the original um, Wuhan-like strain, uh, we found there was evidence uh, later on of uh, replication, which suggests there might be some kind of adaptation going on uh, over the time course. At day seven, um, so really after we find replication has, uh, has abated, but there's still RNA left, we found evidence of uh, viral load in multiple tissues within in the rats. Um, and again, this is much more evident with the two variants of concern um, versus the original Wuhan-like uh, virus. Uh, virus levels were highest in the, the nasal tissue, lung and gut, and to a much lesser extent uh, in brain, heart and liver. So then we, we've done a, an additional experiment to see whether Okay, so it's fine when we're doing a, a high level introduction of a uh, virus via the nose, which is, is uh, experimentally okay, but quite artificial. Um, we can see infection, but can we see um, transmission from rat to rat? And to do this, we've used cages that we've used to, to develop hamster transmission models quite successfully. 
And these are indiv individually ventilated cages that have a barrier uh, down the middle that uh, allows respiratory uh, uh, air and other respiratory um, droplets to go from uh, side to side, um, but obviously doesn't allow direct contact between animals. So we infected uh, what we call an index animals on this side of the, the barrier uh, with, um, in this case, we just used the two variants of concern that we found caused um, infection in the previous experiment. And we used uh, three animals on the other side of the barrier. And again, a very similar experimental design to the first one in that we followed a time course um, James, James, I'm going to have to ask you to, to wrap up fairly quickly, please. Sorry, we're rather overrunning into the next section. OK. Apologies. Thank you. Uh, I'll just cut to the chase then, is that we, we didn't see a lot of weight loss as before, but actually you do see um, transmission, uh, rat to rat transmission um, with the two variants of concern. Um, so in, in conclusion, rats can be infected experimentally with uh, SARS-CoV-2 um, beta variants, uh, better than alpha than, than the original, and tissues involved predominantly uh, nasal, lung and gut, um, and there's evidence of respiratory transmission. So the ongoing work is to actually sequence these genomes uh, to try and detect uh, mutations and see what's going on. We are seeing some of that, but it's very early. We want to repeat a lot of the data. Um, and the bottom line is that suggests that rats have the potential to be a reservoir infection um, and for zoonotic reintroduction into humans. And I think it does uh, warrant further investigation of not just sewage, but live animals um, within the free living population. Thanks very much.